I think everyone is wrong about Taylor Heineke. I do. I think that the reason why the Washington football team has started going on this run is not entirely because of Heineke. I think he's helped, and I'll get into why some of that is in a second, but I do think that there's some other things at play. I think first I'm going to show some statistics, and then I'm going to get into some of the uh, the tape itself. I think that's what I'm going to do. So first, let's talk about some stats. And I think the first thing to talk about is how has the offense improved with Taylor Heineke at quarterback? And if you look at uh, EPA, which is estimated points added per play, uh, it's a good stat to use. It's sort of a team stat, but that's what we're trying to do here, right? See if the team has improved with Taylor Heineke at quarterback, and it has. It's gone from the 28th uh, total ranked defense, or excuse me, to total ranked offense with Carson Wentz at quarterback, but with Heineke, it's jumped up to 23rd. So a marginal upgrade, but still an upgrade. So that I think is enough evidence alone for you to say, okay, maybe Taylor Heineke should be the guy. But I think it's also probably fair to say, wait a second. Okay, cool. Going from 28th to 23rd is, is impressive. That is definitely a benefit that you like, but at the same time, that's not going to turn you from losing every game to winning every game. There has to be more there, and there is. You know, Wentz played the first six games, but if you look at from Carson Wentz in the first six games to Taylor Heineke in the next six games, this is the EPA defensively, which is shockingly different, where you have Carson Wentz, who was the, uh, you know, when he was out there, the defense was the 14th highest ranked defense, but when Taylor Heineke is out there, it went up to the second highest ranked defense. And you might think this is turnovers and stuff. That's not really true. This does account for all that stuff. So it, there, it, that could be, be a factor a little bit, but I don't know if that's the case. What I would suspect happened is just, it's more of a coincidence that the defense happened to get better right around when Carson Wentz uh, got you know injured and Taylor Heineke took over. That That's what I would guess is this, the case. Also, this uh, chart is another interesting one to me. Uh, and again, this isn't to hate on Taylor Heineke. It's just kind of to explain, right? You know, Taylor Heineke is one of the lowest graded pro football focus quarterbacks this season, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, tough stats out there, even if you don't like that, that say maybe he hasn't been spectacular, but there's no denying they've been winning. This is just kind of a kind of trying to understand why they've been winning. And this is part of why I think the offense maybe has gotten better with Heineke out there. This was one weeks one through six. You see that their pass frequency over expected was at 0%, the top bar there, all plays. Uh, they... Basically, what this means is that they threw the ball as much as the average team throws the ball. That's what they did. But with Heineke out there, they become a very run-heavy team. They're running the ball 9% over expected, meaning they're throwing the ball 9% less than expected, which to me, maybe part of, part of me feels like this might be why we've also seen a benefit. We've seen a benefit in the defense. Maybe they're just more rested at this point because they're playing less snaps. And it's also easier for a quarterback when you do have a running game going. So maybe stuff like that is an explanation for why we've seen this team do better. Uh, I now want to kind of shift gears and talk about just how Heineke played last Sunday and talk about what he was able to do well, what he was able to do poorly, and what we kind of take from this going forward. So starting off with this play, I do want to be clear that Heineke will make some impressive throws. Like that, He absolutely is someone who's capable of making some good plays, and this is going to be an example where it's his own coverage, and you see how this concept works. You get a receiver kind of trying to get into a gap in coverage, right, where I've circled in white there. Watch as Heineke takes the snap. He's going to run a play action, and you see right here, there is an opening uh, for Heineke to make this throw, but he's going to have to time it very well. Heineke does time it perfectly, in fact, and you're able to pick up a big chunk play right there. He's able to do that stuff. Like, this one's another example of a very good play, I would say, where it's going to be man coverage. You have, again, a route going over the middle. Watch as Heineke takes the snap. You're going to see him wait for the play to develop. And again, right here, it's not wide open. This is kind of one of those things where if you're playing Madden, it's not just enough to press, uh, you know, whatever button that receiver is. You have to also, you know, in real life, you have to also aim it in a way that your receiver can make the grab. You can't just throw it directly at him. And you see Heineke knows that he has to lead his receiver to be able to make that play. Heineke does make some very good plays. Again, I don't think he's a bad quarterback. To me, he is a top 32 quarterback in football. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that he's the reason that they're winning a bunch of games, but I think that he is someone who is, you know, he's a fine quarterback for sure. But then we have to get over to some of the negatives. I still do think that there is kind of a ceiling on Taylor Heineke and on a Taylor Heineke-led offense, starting with this play. It's going to be a, a zone coverage play. You see how, you know, a route can try to get into a gap in coverage in the end zone. That's what you're hoping for here if you're Washington. Watch as Heineke takes a snap. Heineke is going to look in that direction. And right here, there is, you know, there is a window. To be honest, this is probably one of those 
throws that makes you say, one of those situations that makes you say, okay, this is why the commanders went out and got Carson Wentz. I'm not saying it was a smart call by them. It wasn't. But this is why they did it because Wentz, you know, for his faults, does have really good arm talent. Heineke, he just, he doesn't have the arm talent that some of these other guys do. He just doesn't. You see this throw and there's definitely, you know, he doesn't quite have the zip on it to get it there in time. The uh, tight end went up to make the grab, but by that point, defenders were able to go get over and knock him out of bounds. If it was a little quicker, it's probably a touchdown. And again, you know, it's fine. Every quarterback has their faults. These are Taylor Heineke's. I think that's fair to say. I also do have to say Heineke will just make some bafflingly weird decisions uh, at times. So like this one's a good example of you have a receiver running a route over the middle. On paper, this route can work. However, when this play begins, you see that Heineke is going to, you know, he takes a snap. He looks, this is just not open. This is just not a throw he should make. However, he does decide to make this throw and it's just an easy interception, just kind of a weird decision by Heineke. And he will make these. I mean, again, I don't think Heineke is a spectacular quarterback. I don't think he's a terrible quarterback. I think that he runs the offense relatively well and does have some upside I think that the Washington football team they're not necessarily winning in spite of him I don't think that's fair to say but they're not winning because of him either he's been a piece of the team he has not been the driving factor and maybe you think that you know Carson Wentz is the uh you know he was so bad that just being a piece of the team is is good okay listen that's a that's an argument right you can make that I personally don't know if I see it that way I think there's been a marginal upgrade at quarterback and then other things have gotten a lot better which has allowed this team to start winning and if you're a Washington fan that might be best case scenario because, you know, you are kind of a team that I feel like is maybe a quarterback away from really competing, but you're still a playoff team right now. And I think that, you know, the bright side is if it was just because Heineke was playing well and that's why you were succeeding, there'd be the fear of is he going to fall back down to earth? There really isn't that fear at this point. You don't have to worry about if Heineke starts playing poorly, will you no longer be a good team? Because Heineke is already not playing great. So it's like you're already in an okay position right here. I don't know. That's kind of what I, that's what I view it. Again, I know the simple narrative is just, I think that uh, Heineke is, you know, the reason why they're winning and you can go with that narrative if you want to. That's not how I see it. And what I do on this channel is I look at the information and give my opinions on said information. And that's my opinion based on the information that I have. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.